Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, this is my co-host Teddy and today we're talking about the RTX 2060 and sort of going over its value for money. So I did this previously with the RTX 2070, 2080 and 2080 Ti when they launched and I thought it would be good to do it with the 2060 because that seems to be what a lot of people are talking about. Like is it good value? Some people are saying it is, other people are saying it's not. So we're going to go over that to here today. We're also going to have a look back at the previous two Nvidia launches, so Pascal and Maxwell, and see how the 2060 stacks up there. But first, let's go over the 2060 itself. Most of you guys, I would assume, are aware, but for those who aren't, the 2060 is a Turing GPU, 12 nanometer Turing GPU. Uh, it's got the same GPU as the 2070, the TU-106. So that's interesting, different from the previous generations, as you'll soon see. It's coming with 1920 CUDA cores instead of the 2304 you get on the 2070. It also has fewer TMUs, ROPs, and RT cores, but that's to be expected. Clock speeds, however, are actually better than the 2070, on paper anyway. 1680 MHz on the boost clock compared to 1620 MHz for the 2070 boost. That's on a stock model, and remember, those will go up because they have GPU boost. Um, you'll very rarely actually see them actually come down to that speed. It will usually be significantly higher, but it's a good sort of baseline for us to go off. Now, the 2060 is coming with 6 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory on a 192-bit bus. There's no mention of a cut-down model yet. I'd hope NVIDIA doesn't do that, but knowing NVIDIA, they probably will. So we'll just have to see how that plays out. So that's obviously less than what you get with the 2070, which comes with 8 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory, the same amount as what you get on the 2080, and both of them are on the 256-bit bus, the 2070 and the 2080, that is. So the 2060 is coming in at 350 US dollars, which is what a lot of us were expecting considering the price hikes that have hit the rest of the 20 series launch. I think 350 was where a lot of people were thinking. Some people who are a bit more pessimistic, I guess you might say, were saying 400. I think a lot of us figured it would be between sort of 330 and 380, somewhere in there. And of course, 350 fits right in the middle of that. So having a look back to Pascal, the 1060 does compare in certain ways to the 2060, but it also doesn't. So for a refresher, the 2060 came with the 16 nanometer GP106 GPU, which was different from the GP104 you got in the 2070. It also had far fewer CUDA cores coming in at 1280 compared to the 1920 of the 1070. Clock speeds were actually slightly higher on the 1060 though, at 1708 MHz boost out of the box, so that's decent. The memory amount and the bus sizes remain the same as the 2060, however, uh, it was running GDDR5 memory. We're talking about at launch, I know it got GDDR5X later on, but we're just talking about the ones that came out at launch. Uh, so that's obviously significantly slower than the GDDR6 memory you're getting with the uh, 2060. So obviously the 2060 does also get another advantage there in memory, even though the memory amount is still the same. So that's decent, uh, you would say. The 2060 has more in common with the 1070 than it does really the 1060 though. However, the 1060 did come in at $300 for the Founders Edition and $250 for the regular MSRP. So it is $100 cheaper. Uh, it, well, it was $100 cheaper at launch than the 2060. We could say the 2060 is $100 more expensive at launch than the 1060. But let's also remember the 1070 when that launched, because that came in at 450 US dollars for the Founders Edition and 380 on the regular price. And when we consider the specs between the two, the uh, 2060 and the 1070, which do line up in a lot of ways, that $350 price tag starting to not look so bad then and i think that's what a lot of tech reviewers have been saying is that once you consider that it's not really as bad of a deal but let's look even further back then and go back to maxwell 
So the GTX 960 came with the 28 nanometer GM206 GPU, packing 1024 CUDA cores compared to the GM204 970, which had 1664 CUDA cores. Clock speeds were much, much lower, being that it was a 28 nanometer chip. Uh, coming in at 1178 megahertz boost and memory was much more limited at 2 or 4 gigs of GDDR5 on a 128 bit bus. Although price wise it did come in at 200 US dollars at launch which is quite cheap and remember that's only back in 2015 so it's not like this was years and years ago. It's not that long ago but of course that memory is much more limited and you see the specs there are much lower than what you got with say the 1060 or now with the 2060. So after looking back at all that, what can we draw from it? So what do we take from all that information? So first of all, the 2060 is more in line with being like a 1070 replacement given the specs that it features. The performance is matching a 1070 Ti from what most people are seeing. And considering the price, it isn't really that bad of a deal. It's not like what everyone was going on about when the 2070 and 2080 launched. However, it isn't exactly a great deal either. Let's think back. When the 1070 came out, it absolutely destroyed the 970. Like it wasn't even close. So very solid, you know, upgrade there. If you upgraded from the 970 to a 1070, that was a very solid upgrade. Considering the 1070 was matching in many games, the 980 Ti in performance. Now, of course, that was going from Maxwell to Pascal, which was a big leap, and the, the change from Pascal to Turing is much more minor. So we can't sort of run away with it too much there, but still, it was a significant upgrade. And then we look now, and the 2060 is matching the 1070 Ti. It'll beat a 1070, and it will handily beat a 1060. So it is a good upgrade. If you had a 1060 now and you upgraded to a 2060, that would be a solid upgrade for sure. And you can't take anything away from it there. But you also have to remember the price tag it's coming with. And that's sort of where I think a lot of people are getting, not confused, but they're having to weigh it up. Yes, the 2060 is now coming in at $350 US. So the price is getting up there. However, at the same time, it's got a pretty decent specs bump. And if you're comparing it to the 1060, it's a pretty good deal. But of course, it's always going to come down to what you value more, you know, performance or the value side of it. So I want to throw it to you guys. I'm aware a lot of people are saying that 1070 Ti pricing had been down to like 380 right before the 2060 launch. So even if you take that into consideration at 350 that's still cheaper than what the 1070 ti's are at even if it's matching it and also it does come with a lot of new technology which is good all the ray tracing stuff and all the dlss stuff which is actually quite good i'm really enjoying uh, dlss and final fantasy 15 that cannot be overshadowed but is it worth it that's the key question that everyone's asking. And that's the question I'm asking you guys here today. In the comment section down below, do you think the spec bump that the 2060 has received, along with the new technology and everything, justifies the increase in price up to 350 US dollars? I wanna know what you guys think. Draw on all the information I've given you here today and obviously information you've gathered from other channels and let me know in the comment section down below what you think. Be nice guys, I don't want this to turn into everyone going, oh, Nvidia's so greedy, Nvidia's this. Just look at the card itself, not the company, just the 2060, and tell me what you think. I'd really like to know. Now, I thank you guys for watching this video. Please subscribe to Tech Showdown if you haven't already, and like the video. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.